All right. Good evening, guys. Welcome back to our latest episode of Kaya Plus Not So Late Night Show. Uh, today, we will be going back to uh, one of the key topics that we actually discussed, I think, roughly one year ago. So back then, um, when the pandemic was, you know, still very, very serious, uh, a lot of people were asking about how REITs will be performing. And fast forward one year today, yeah, things didn't turn out as good as we expected. Uh, I mean, things have improved, but REITs, again, might be uh, affected by uh, the recent uh, tightening of the uh, movement control order in Malaysia. And uh, I think it's quite the right time to relook really again into REITs, but um, not to uh, repeat what REITs that we have previously covered, but to go into a potential new REIT. Some, some, this REIT, uh, I think a lot of people have been talking about REIT. Uh, a lot of the uh, income investors uh, with online presences have also been uh, talking about this REIT a lot. So we'll dig deep, deeper into this, uh, this retail REIT as of today. Uh, some actually call it a still growing and still prospective uh, retail REIT uh, of Malaysia, uh, which is very strong in the urban area, urban uh, handling uh, properties in the urban uh, community centers, uh, the urban retail REIT. So we will talk about keep REIT as of today. And of course, uh, later, shout out to our Kaya Plus Premium Club. So we have launched our Premium Club services. So what is inside here? our premium club is that we do have uh, private videos and FAQ. So this is the latest one that we did we talk about how you should actually think twice and think thrice uh, when actually uh, sculpting or even uh, building your investment thesis on a certain company, right? You have always have to think of the worst case scenario that's to happen and we cover a bit on that video. And moving on, we also have a premium uh, articles. So we talk about how Last year, during the peak of the pandemic, where my portfolio was down by double digits and uh, how I actually still continue to find good opportunities, holding on and buying on to good companies and fast forward one year as of today, uh, the entire post-mortem process. And of course, those who have joined us via the Dividend Gems, you have also received your Dividend Gems report where we actually run through Busa Malaysia with our Dividend gem uh, checklist. And of course, uh, we also do have uh, a special segment where we cater uh, some investing related uh, thematic uh, topics to those who are interested in certain kinds of niche sector. So previously in the month of April, we covered electric vehicles and the upcoming month of July, we will be touching on semiconductors. So what is inside semiconductor? Basically, we will cover from the designer, the chip designers, down to the fabricators, the foundries, and also the uh, OSET companies, which a lot of them are available in Malaysia. And last but not least, also on the EMS companies as well. And of course, do expect uh, we will be touching based on uh, very, very huge companies that are uh, very, very important in our daily lives as of today, uh, Samsung, Intel, uh, NVIDIA, TSMC, and also the local uh, players like Vichox, Inari, Jeff Tech, and Franken as well. So bookmark the dates. Uh, if you are interested in to joining us in Semiconductor Sphere, it will be happening on the 24th of July, 10 a.m. It will be a one-day event from, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And of course, those who are actually our uh, premium club members, you actually get access to the event for free. And of course, here is just a snapshot on the previous coverage for electric vehicles. You have your lithium compound companies, your auto part components, and also your EV manufacturers like Tesla, NIO, General Motors, and Volkswagen. Right, so here you have it. You we have basically covered what the offerings we are actually having for our premium club members. The subscription is just 488 per year uh, compared to an individual event, which uh, definitely costs around 100 plus. Uh, we do actually uh, encourage you to actually enroll in the premium club member to enjoy the full benefits of the entire uh, products and services that we are currently serving to our members, right? And uh, of course, back to the main company of the night, which is Keep Read. So of course, a little disclaimer, what we are talking 
of about this company today is just personal opinion. Uh, does not constitute to a buy and sell or hold decision. Of course, if you think and feel that this company is worthwhile to analyze deeper and potential and investment opportunity, please do further uh, your due diligence and uh, we hope you the very best in finding your next potential investment. Right, I'll pass it to Chunbei. Uh, what is Keep Read? Uh, I know it's a read, but uh, what is the business all about? And uh, should we be excited uh, about this uh, read? I think just IPO less than a few years back and uh, in terms of history-wise, it's just a relatively very young read. Yep. So, uh, like what Japan mentioned, a key breed just got listed in Busan, Malaysia, I think back in 2017. So, if you calculate, uh, to this year is 2021, so it's just about four years old. So, kind of new into the REIT market. And then, uh, they are quite uh, special in a way, uh, focusing purely on retail market. And then, uh, what they are trying to tell the investor out there is they are retail focused. Uh, putting up a lot of community-centric kind of more uh, in different different areas. So this is how they plan to differentiate themselves compared to other uh, REITs provider. And of course, uh, if you are not familiar with REIT uh, structures, so this is typically uh, how it works. So read it, keep REIT in the center. And then me and you who will be investing our money in, uh, we are the unit holder. So indirectly, you are like the property owner, uh, property of multiple, uh, uh, owner of multiple properties uh, by just investing into REITs. So uh, you put your money into it and then uh, Keep REIT itself will be having some uh, REIT manager to help to manage all the uh, properties and so on and then uh, continue to do some investment. And then of course, if there's any returns, uh, you'll go back to you uh, in the form of dividend uh, on every uh, year. So it, it depends on the declaration. So you just think of it, uh, it's a little bit like unit trust uh, by putting into one unit. Technically, you are owning multiple stocks at one go, but this is not stocks. It's just multiple property at one go. So this is how REITs work in general. And then this is the trust structure that we can see from keep REIT perspective. And then, like what we mentioned, uh, Keep is focusing into providing the community-centric more. And then uh, currently, uh, they are very focusing into the southern region of Malaysia. So you can see uh, this is the top six uh, investment properties they have uh, when they got listed. So uh, they have a few in Johor, mainly in Johor. You can see the one in Masai, Kota Tinggi, and also Tampoy. Uh, they also have one in uh, the central region, which is the one in Bangi. And of course, not forgetting, uh, there are another two, one in Malacca and another one in Negeri Sembilan. So this is where uh, it gets started. And of course, along the year, uh, when it entered into 2019, so uh, they have been working on uh, with the acquisition of this mall in the northern region, uh, which is Para Ipoh. Uh, so they have completed the uh, full uh, acquisition in uh, July of 2019, and then uh, the value itself is about 220 mil. And then this mall itself uh, will actually have a master lease expiry in FY 2026. So this is a very uh, promising move, and a lot of people are eyeing on to, into this because of this acquisition. And of course, fast forward, we zoom into how they perform uh, as of financial year 2020, uh, which is uh, as of 2020 June, uh, this is the breakdown. So you can see uh, the Aeon Kinta City Mall is the big contributor. So when they come in just on the first year itself, you're already up to 20.1%. And of course, if you wanted to zoom into further, uh, yes, uh, the most of the mall are impacted uh, due to pandemic. You can see on the FY 2020, the year-on-year -year performance uh, by revenue uh, is actually showing uh, dropping signal, especially uh, the one in uh, Malacca and also in Bangi. So, uh, but some of the more you can see, it's not only happening during FY 2020. So even the year before that also showing uh, the dropping in terms of uh, revenues. So uh, it's kind of some signal that you should be keeping an eye on beside the big acquisition happening in the Northern region. And then uh, 
the latest uh, quarterly uh, break, uh, breakdown uh, by region, you can see uh, the contribution of Aeon Quinta City Mall actually go up to 23%. So it's kind of uh, dangerous in a way because uh, you are putting more and more focus uh, into this one single mall in the northern region. And then uh, if you zoom into the net property income, uh, even closing to 29.4%. So this is a very uh, worrying sign because uh, the remaining mall might not be performing. And then you, you can also see from uh, this, so it's mainly due to the occupancy. So the one that is performing well is uh, the one in Johor. So they have been able to uh, occupy the entire uh, area of the mall up to 90 over percent. But then the one in Senawang, Malacca and Bangi is uh, some of it not even hitting 80 percent. So this is something that we should closely monitor because this is definitely some of the mall that pulling down uh, their growth uh, even though with a good number coming in from Aeon Mall, Kinta City, but it's just good enough to cover some of the uh, reducing of the revenue in Senawang, Malacca, and also Bangi. And of course, uh, the investment properties valuation also drops uh, due to the overall sentiments and also demand. The only one that actually uh, increased is the one uh, that they acquired back in 2019, which is the Aeon Mall uh, in Ipoh. And then this is one of the big things that you should take note. Uh, the tenancy expiry profile is not really well spread. So it's kind of focused in one single financial years. So you can see uh, there will be about uh, 641 uh, tenancies going to expire by FY 2021. Uh, meaning this financial year itself, uh, a lot of uh, tenants might need to go through the contract renewal in terms of rental. And of course, if you talk about recovery, sometimes you will talk about this uh, during this kind of a renewal and uh, you have the chance to increase the rental. So it's a positive sign, uh, even though it's, it's focusing in one year, then maybe if it managed well, then you can see the positive sign. But then right now uh, is during the pandemic time and a lot of uh, tenants is actually going to aspire by this financial year. So we should really uh, take a look into it because if they, if they cannot uh, continue, uh, they don't want to proceed with the renting of the space, then they will have a very big impact in to keep rid. And of course, uh, 30 over percent in terms of net letable area, but this is not the most worrying one. The worrying one is 50% of the uh, growth, growth rental income is actually expiring in FY 2021. So these are some of the uh, key business info uh, that keep rid is having and I will pass to Jupan to talk about the financial performance. Yeah, thanks, Jupan. So looking into the uh, practically, you know, short uh, history performance that um, Keep Read is having, actually, you would a lot of people are actually uh, champion for this read, right? Um, they say like it's a read that is uh, still growing. Uh, valuation wise, it's relatively cheaper than your other retail reads available in your stock market like IGB read and also Sun read uh, and it has actually uh, reported very significant and very nice growth uh, uh, along the years right so it's ever since 2018 to 2019 and then, then everything has been going upwards like so uh, and you have to know why it has been going upwards uh, mainly because uh, when they IPO the read on their hand itself it already has a, a good pool of uh, investment properties uh, which are quite strategically located uh, within the community center uh, and um, yeah it serves primarily uh, a lot of the housing area people uh, they are away from the city and uh, it also has a kind of niche to it right but the huge jump in terms of growth only happened in 2020 uh, you can see that uh, Revenue jump uh, from 63.1 to 74.5 million uh, due to the acquisition uh, of Aeon Quinta City Mall. So that sudden jump 
is due to the contribution from Aeon Kinta City Mall. Uh, but nevertheless, of course, you can see that the profit margin is still uh, slumping downwards because yeah, you when you buy a property, you have to incur certain additional expenses and certain uh, additional borrowing costs. So that will definitely be impacting uh, your net profit margin for a short term period of time. Right. And come to the uh, quarterly uh, breakthrough uh, or trend, you can see that uh, something happened in quarter four of 2020. So that was the quarter where they had to really um, take to uh, consideration uh, the so-called losses that they have to uh, swallow or recognize due to the rental rebate. So a lot of the landlords, uh, be your big Hypermarkets or, or shopping centers, they all have actually played a vital part into supporting their tenants uh, by offering rental rebates. So as for uh, keep rate, they actually uh, have to register uh, a quarterly loss, which happened in Q4 2020. But apart from that, any, everything seems to be rebounding quite well uh, for Q1 to Q3 of 2021, where it's, everything is back to positive regenerating. Right. And... Uh, Going to the balance sheet of uh, keep rate, you can see that the debts actually went up a lot, so did the assets. So when you buy a new shopping center, that shopping center actually adds on to your total assets. That's why you see a sudden jump. And if you actually finance the purchase of the uh, shopping center uh, with the help of uh, borrowings or medium term notes or debts, right? So that's where you see the debt yellow line also in sharp as well. So everything is in tandem. And uh, that also push up the uh, debt to uh, asset ratio as well. As for total equity, the company, all right, they actually registered a one-off loss in quarter four of 2020, but that is not too much to actually pull down the retained earnings portion and the total equity portion as well. And as for the cash flow activities, it's also very straightforward. You can see that, um, they borrow money, hence the financing cash flow went up, and then they channel the uh, borrowings or the medium term notes that they raised to actually uh, acquire Aeon Kinta City more. And hence, you see a big uh, drawdown in terms of the cash flow investing versus related uh, activities. Uh, in terms of operating cash flow, it's relatively flat. Uh, no big sudden jumps since. Um, it's just one additional property to their whole portfolio. And of course, uh, a lot of people who have been uh, enticed by the high dividend yield, uh, but do take note that um, I would say that fiscal year 2021 might see the dividend not hitting uh, the levels as of uh, fiscal year 2020, uh, mainly due to some of the carry forward effects from the uh, pandemic uh, induced losses. Uh, but of course, if you are confident of the read uh, to continue to grow in the future, to continue to uh, be very smart into uh, buying their future investment properties, then yes, it could be a very uh, great deal as of today's pricing and today's uh, portfolio of properties. So next, we will actually be touching on the valuation of the company. So I think it actually came down quite a bit from uh, 90 cents down to around 70 cents due to the sell-off. Uh, but it has since went back up uh, close to 90 cents and now coming back down a bit uh, due to the MCO uh, announcement by the Malaysian government. So it's uh, currently at 84 cents. Uh, dividend yield is around 6.41%. And yeah, since it's a potential kind of dividend play or an income stock, so why don't we run through keep read with our dividend gems checklist? So since this is a read, we will be using the read module to actually uh, check against dividend uh, keep read to see whether it is a uh, dividend uh, potential be dividend company. So of course, if you look at the historical performance, you can argue that the Q4 2020 uh, losses is just one off and things seem to be returning to normal for keep rate and uh, they still might need some time to actually grow back their revenue to grow past 20 million uh, per quarter. So I'll give it a go. I'll give it a yeah, okay, fine. Uh, give the read some time. Just uh, neglecting the one off unprecedented impact from COVID-19, it is still uh, exciting and growing week. So 
to hurdle two, uh, those who have actually attended Dividend Gems would know what we will be looking at. Uh, of course, if you are interested to know more details, do join us in our Dividend Gems. Uh, and of course, we will give you a snapshot of the 12 hurdles that you particularly screen out for REITs. You can see that um, Kitwit actually failed uh, hurdle five and hurdle eight. And these two hurdles are relatively important into screening out a good and potential dividend company. So based on the kind of uh, performances that uh, Kipri is actually giving by running through the hurdles, uh, we are a little bit on the skeptical side uh, on Kipri's near-term to mid-term future. And uh, we'll really need to dig deeper and uh, look wait a little, a little bit longer so that the uh, negative sentiments or the negative uh, performance as of lately uh, see some improvement before we actually are more confident to uh, say that it's a potential dividend gem uh, for investors like you and me. Of course, if you are interested to learn how to find good dividend companies, uh, do consider registering for dividend gems. So it's going to be 4 8 per packs. The time and date would be uh, 10 to 4 p.m. It's a two-day event uh, happening in the 12th and 13th of June 2021. And of course, just a summary of what dividend gems will be co covering is just basically steps and criteria to screen out good dividend companies. And we divided them to normal companies, bank and insurance companies, and also REITs. It's due to the special metrics and uh, business operating procedures uh, each uh, companies or uh, sectors have, so you have to really screen them individually according to what they are doing for the business. And of course, if there are any updates uh, on top of Dividend Gems, you stand to receive all the updates free for life. There will be no additional pay up for cost material updates. And of course, uh, you will get access to the materials and also the video replays uh, for Dividend Gems as well. Right, um, valuation. Uh, maybe I'll pass it to Chumbing to get his opinions before I top up my opinion as well. Yep. So uh, I think all I will be focusing into one uh, key uh, field, which is the dividend yield. Uh, but like what we mentioned before, it's mainly due to some sell down. Uh, the, the the stock price wasn't uh, as high as uh, previously. That's why the dividend uh, yield seems to be uh, much, much higher if compared to all the no, uh, all the other reads but then of course uh, if you talk about the pb ratio the price to book ratio is actually uh, below one uh if you talk about bank uh, uh, or other company then you think well this is technically undervalued because uh from the book itself uh it seems to be worthing more but then you also can see uh there also some having some adjustment in terms of valuation uh from the mall itself only Aeon uh, more is showing uh, in increasing of the valuation, uh, the property valuation, but then the rest is actually uh, on the reducing trend. So this is some of the things that should take note. I think this is also the reason why the PB ratio is actually staying below one. Uh, then the rest is the other uh, figures, uh, but for me, uh, read typically you will be looking into a few things. One of it is dividend yield. The second one is uh, the PB ratio. And also, you can also look into it from an NTA perspective. Yep. Maybe to top out on what Jiming said, uh, you have to really understand um, what Keep Reed's business is all about, right? So, we talk about Keep Reed being a landlord managing uh, retail related properties in the uh, consumer centric areas or the urban areas where a lot of, uh, and it's also outskirts, it's not like, city area, right? So who are the tenants uh, of Keep Wheat? Can the tenants of the Keep Wheat actually uh, take the so-called effects of uh, an MCO? So if we talk about uh, great big shopping malls whose tenants might include uh, those branded chains, so sure they have a better balance sheet to actually survive any uh, shutdown or lockdown or uh, economic inducing uh, black swan events compared to a sole proprietorship who is renting a space uh, from Keep uh property. So all of these have to take into consideration. It's not just about how good the numbers look, but you also have to really dig deeper to what are the risks 
uh, of keep bid not able to uh, retain their current tenants or even increase the rental uh, from their tenants. We have seen for the past three years, some of the keep malls uh, have failed to increase their tenancy profile, have also failed to actually increase the gross revenue generated. So if you have a very good uh, mall only performing and then supporting the other underperforming more, then there bounds to be uh, uh, somewhere in the future where the growth suddenly hits the ceiling because uh, not all properties are synergizing and growing together, but only one of it is actually covering up for the other non-performing ones. So just uh, a word of caution uh, before you actually get enticed to the dividend yield, maybe for you, it has to be digging deeper into the uh, near-term to mid-term uh, growth prospect of the smaller uh, keep reads, keep read malls before you actually can confidently say that ah, this could be uh, a potential income stock to add into your portfolio. So that's it for my side. And uh, anything you want to top up, Chun Beng? Yeah, so I think they are focusing into uh, this thing called community-centric mall. Uh, but you need to think of it from a few perspective. Lah. So uh, more typically uh, can attract crowd uh, for people to go there and buy grocery stuff, doing shopping. Another one is they can go there for food. So I think for go going there for food uh, is a big question mark uh, if you talk about keep read because it's not like uh, IGB reads, for example, Mid Valley and also the gardens. It's actually a mix of both uh, retail mall plus office areas. So it's very focusing high rise, a lot of uh, offices at, in there. So when uh, the things back to normal, there will be a lot of, I would say, uh, permanent uh, income in a way because there will be people going there for work. They will just go there for lunch or dinner. But keep read might not be true because it's community centric. People might go there for shopping, for grocer. And if you talk about grocer, then you got uh, the something like uh, speed marks or, or whatnot that can might be much much nearer to you and also uh, uh, offering a cheaper price so all this uh, actually creates some threat to to keep reads but of course uh, i think the move of acquiring uh, aon more probably is the right one uh, we shall also continue to monitor whether there will be other acquisition like this uh, and going up north so this is a few key takeaway for keep reads i think yep. uh, that's all for today's uh thank you very much so we will see you guys next week same time uh, uh same channels and then uh hope to see you again yep of course if you do have uh, any companies that you want us to cover for the upcoming not so late night show you can leave them in the comment section or you can actually contact us too from uh to from our various platforms and channels yeah you can actually pm us on facebook youtube or even on uh, instagram as well and uh, of course uh, if that's all we see you we'll see you next week and uh, take care and have a great evening bye bye